Hey, hello everyone. This will be your discussion video one for the understanding the self subject, focusing on the self from various perspectives. Okay, so um, one of the major objectives of this subject is, of course, coming from its subject title, understanding the self, is that we will be discussing various aspects of the self, mainly its cognitive and as and their um effective aspects. But before we will dwell on those integral aspects of the self, we will focus first on the various perspectives of the self from well known um philosophers, psychologists, and of course, how the various fields of sciences view the self. Okay, so let's start with Socrates. So I believe you're all familiar with Socrates, right? So one of its main ideas you now by Socrates is the importance of self-knowledge. So he even stated that the unexamined life is not worth living. So how does this self-knowledge works? So for Socrates, self-knowledge is our ability you know, on how we check on ourselves by questioning how we can improve our own lives. So self-knowledge uh, also includes uh, on how or like questioning how we want to live our own lives. You know? So I want you to ask all of you here, no, were there moments in your life that you were able to try at, at least um, contemplate once in a while and ask uh, these questions imposed by Socrates? No, questioning like how you want to live your life. So what should you do so that your life will be worth living in terms of your standards or what should be uh, worth living to you? Okay, so another um, idea mentioned by Socrates is the existence of two kinds, the visible and invisible. So the visible is our physical body, while uh, the invisible is our soul. So he mentioned that our bodies change over time. So as what I perceive in this notion is that our physical bodies change as we get older. Right, so with the wrinkles nata, no, our bodies will move slower compared before. Okay, so for our soul, it is constant. So what do you mean by constant? So constant meaning it's a continual process. So it's always changing. So how we think and how our minds work is, uh, is always changing daily. No, so this is another notion by Socrates. Uh, is that he strongly believed uh, that the goal of life is to be happy. So uh, when he talked about being happy, uh, this includes our virtues as a person. So what are the virtues that Socrates has been talking about? So these virtues are morally accepted qualities in society. So we uh, set some standards of what these virtues are nga, uh, we think or we believe that um, the society accepts that. So um, if the person applies these virtues to his own life, happiness will automatically follow as per Socrates. So some examples of virtues are courage, prudence, and justice. Okay, so the next philosopher is the student of Socrates. That is Plat Plato. Plato, okay. <laughs> okay, so Plato is best known for his theory of forms. So presenting the three parts of the soul um, are the following, no? the appetitive, rational, and spirited. Okay, so for the appetitive, as per Plato, this... Um, explains that our soul enjoys sensual experiences. And what are these sensual experiences? No, These are the human's basic needs, which, uh, which are food, no drinks, and sex. And then for rational, 
Plato explains that this part of the soul is um, the one who is responsible for uh, reasoning why a person should do sensual things. So it might sound like um, the rational part controls the appetitive part. Okay. And then lastly, the spirited part uh, of uh, the spirited part. No. So what differs between the spirited from the rational part is that um, the spirited can still function by being rational about uh, the situation. At the same time, it can understand you know, the, um, the demands of these sensual experiences. So it can balance things out that you can still do these sensual things while being reasonable. Okay? Now for St. Augustine, you no. Know, whose philosophical approach is uh, more leading towards Christian thinking. So he adopts uh, Plato's idea on theory of forms. And he sees various aspects of the self that um, selves can be uh, aware of own self, recognizes um, itself as a holistic one. So when you mean by holistic this means that the different aspects of self are interconnected with each other okay and it's also uh, it also talks about unity so this is in connection to the previous aspect of the self or or rather the soul no nga it's a holistic one and that the interconnectedness of one another will make up one soul for the self okay and then Rene Descartes is known for his um, famous line, Kugito Ergo Sum, meaning I think, I think, therefore I am. Okay, so Rene Descartes sees um, the self as the material substance. So he conceptualizes that our bodies and the immaterial substance, which is our soul, are separate entities. So the body. Again, ch changes over the time while the soul is a thinking substance that is um, unaffected by time. And then John Locke um, sees the self as a thinking thing. So more, um, uh, more importantly, this uh, thinking aspect of the self includes our memories okay so he sees the human mind as a tabula rasa so tabula rasa means that our mind is blank or an empty slate at birth okay so he believe on that and in connection to this uh john locke sees the self that through these various experiences we have daily you no know, this will constitute our entire self Okay. So again, since he mentioned the importance of memories, uh, we can already identify what we really are through these memories we had in the past up to the present. And we'll connect all those memories and these memories can contribute to the entity of our own self. And then David Hume uh, is known for his uh, bundle theory. So uh, he divided the mind's uh, perspective perception into two groups the impressions and ideas so impressions are perceptions that are the strongest so how do these perceptions consider to be strongest why why he said that this is because um impressions these are the um immediate actual experience of the person so when we are out in an into a situation or experience, the actual sensations we feel at that exact moment are impressions. So what you're feeling right now, what um what experiences that you you perceive at the mo at the exact moment, those are impressions. And then on the other hand, um ideas on the other hand, no, um ideas are uh less forcible and less lively because they are the products of our previous impression so we can incorporate this one uh, similar to a memory of uh, uh, it's, uh it's like relieving those sensations we had in the past and trying to go back to those experiences okay and then Immanuel Kant 
So he views the self as transcendental. So this means that the self is related to both spiritual and non-physical whims. So if you were able to observe you know, the various philosophers, they view the self as not uh, solely the physical body, but as a separate entity to the mind or a soul. So they're more focused on um, the person's experiences, you no, know, the thoughts, the thinking, instead of viewing the self on its outer appearance. Okay. So Immanuel Kant uh, also presented uh, the two components you know, of self, which are the inner self and the outer self. So the inner self uh, includes our mood, feelings and sensations that we all experience and then your rational and psychological aspects uh, also includes your inner self. On the other hand, the outer self is what you send in the outside world or your environment. So it is what you feel, uh, you hear or any perceptions you experience in your surroundings, your perceptions. No, At that again, at that certain or particular moment okay and then sigmund freud sigmund freud is um, more focused on the human mind or what we all know the psyche so in the psyche this includes the um consciousness and unconscious state of the human mind so Sigmund Freud divided three levels of consciousness. No, the conscious meaning your awareness of the or the perceptions, the thoughts and feelings again at the present moment. That's uh, the term that used by Sigmund Freud for the conscious level. No, so that's the first level, and then for the second level is the preconscious or subconscious. So these are uh, the data that can be brought on a conscious level anytime. So an example here is our memories. So despite that, um, we are not experiencing that certain memory no, at, at that moment since it already happened. But we can be able to retrieve those memories in the past on, um, on our subconscious level. Okay, And lastly, the unconscious is the data that we are unaware. So we're, we are not aware of it that it exists no, in our human mind. So it can be retrieved at a conscious level, kato mga unconscious nga data we had. But rather, this data would show differently. No, uh, We cannot exactly remember it or we cannot exactly know it, but it can be shown in a conscious level. No? that we're not aware of it nga mauna dito siya ang um, data from our unconscious. Okay, so what are some examples here? Uh, examples, slips of the tongue. So there are some certain words nga malitok lang, no? You can just um say nga you're not aware of it or what you're, or kanabit ang matinga ka nga, oh, why did I say that, no? Okay, or some unexplained feelings or emotions. And then, um, Mostly, no, most of our traumatic uh, repressed memories or any anxiety provoking experiences in the past or in during our childhood would be put into the into our unconscious level. Okay, so Sigmund Freud is also known for his psychoanalytic theory. So he further structured the mind into three parts. So kani parts na sad ni siya no. Uh, a while ago, we talked about the levels, and then this is the my uh, the the three parts of the mind. So, um, the id, which is the pleasure principle, no. So this is the part wherein our urges should be satisfied. So what are these urges again? The basic needs, no, our uh, food, drink, and sex. And then the second is the ego. So this is the reality principle. So the ego, um, mediates the id. To become more rational and it delays the, the gratification of the aid. No? Um, 
it would it would say nga oh um you should uh dili sa karon dili sa ka pwede nga muka oh, no if because it's it's still not um allowed ng ana that's the the ego and then super ego is the one who controls uh our impulses of the id and it is more concerned with the values and morals of the society so the super ego also again consists of two systems the conscience and the ideal self so conscience are feelings of guilt no while the ideal self uh, is the imaginary picture of what you want to be so these are your aspirations no uh your ideas no that uh what you want to be uh, you should become perfect uh the perfect version of yourself okay okay also the book no our reference book also mentions some philosophers no gilbert ryle paul churchland and maurice marluponti okay and then for sociology uh, how he uh, how sociology sees the self or the its concept of self so of course our society also plays an important role in molding one's self so our society's beliefs and norms of what we consider normal and acceptable behaviors and the values imposed by our community and uh, families greatly affect of how we behave and what we see as right or wrong. So George Simel um, believes that people create social networks. So as the, uh, as the famous saying goes, that no man is an island. It is our human nature to interact with fellow human beings. No? So George Simel considers a social group to be members that share common characteristics. So examples of social groups are your family, you know, your friends, specifically your barcada, your classmates. Okay, And then meanwhile, for social network refers to the reason why you are connected with your social group. So for example, if your social group is your family, then your social network is connected uh, or you are rather you are connected with your family because of blood relation okay so that's uh that's the social network um another example now is that for example you are enrolled in the same program let's say um uh like engineering perhaps no so you have the same program as your classmates so the social network for that is you share the same interest no in engineering particularly what like specific field in engineering in the course of why you chose no so that's your social um network with your classmates is that you share the same interest in that particular field of program okay and then george herbert mead he is a sociologist no and he develops the concept of two sides of self no the I and me. Okay, so ang I side is who you are as a self, you no, know, without conforming to the rules or norms of the society. So it is part of yourself that doesn't need any affirmation from the people around you and you don't care about any judgment of what others may say about you. So that's the real you. And then the me side is the learned behaviors and attitudes from the society. So this is the aspect of the self that uh, strives to follow the rules, no? what, uh, what the society expects you to do and what the society uh, thinks that is right behavior no, or what are what are acceptable or daily so you're trying or you are striving to do that that's the me side joseph ledoux is a neuroscientist so he uh, conceptualized the self's implicit and explicit aspects so explicit is the aspect of the self that is consciously aware of at the present moment, while 
implicit is not readily available in the consciousness. So if you were able to listen, no, uh, what I talk about Sigmund Freud's level of consciousness, it has the same concept uh, as regards to the conscious, subconscious, and unconscious. Okay. And then Catherine Reeve, uh, she strongly believed that uh, culture plays an important role in how you view relationships, personality traits, achievements, and emotions. So our world no, has various culture and its diversity uh, shows how dynamic the self is and how it differs from one person to another. Kailahilay mo putag mga culture. Okay, and then next is John Piaget, uh, psychologist John Piaget pioneered the theory of cognitive development. And Piaget is focused on the person's how, uh, how we develop and process information and happenings in our environment. So, PAJ presented four stages of cognitive development. So I hope you were able to read that. No, there was a table in the book. So the four stages of cognitive development is sensory motor, first stage, and then pre-operational, second stage. Third stage is the concrete. And the fourth stage is formal operations. So um, it is expected that by the age of 12, the child has already reached the formal operations stage wherein the child is capable of abstract thinking. So, Kamu said, no, you're already a college student. So, it's it's really expected now on your end that you were able to, to um, achieve the formal operations stage. Basin o ning stuck ramo sa sensory motor ha. So, no. Um, it's expected na by this age that you were able to develop the formal operations stage. Okay, next is Dr. Susan Harter. So she's also a psychologist, no, detailed the, the development of self-concept. So at different stages of life, no, a, a person could have a different self. No. So Harter explained that during early childhood, the person describes the self based only on the observable characteristics or uh, physical attributes. So, for example, if you will ask you know, the child you know, how he or she sees, sees herself, so you know, I am pretty or like I am based on the physical attributes lang ang iyang, um, ma explain about the self. Then, in the middle to later childhood, the person sees the self based on the observed traits. So, um, he, the child will uh, be able to, to see self no, based on traits like the person can see a person, a, a person or rather a child can see a person a friendly, honest ba siya, or shy or different kinds of traits. In ana ng way of uh, seeing no, the self of a child during middle to later childhood. Okay, and then um, for during, rather, during adolescence, no, the abstract self emerges wherein the person tries to ask the self deeply by exploring their inner thoughts, emotions, attitudes, and motives. And lastly, emerging adults uh, at that age, you know, we see ourselves as what we envision of a possible self. So these are our dreams and what they want or what we want to happen in our future self based on our realistic goals in life. Okay? Carl Rogers... Uh, divided the self into the ideal self and the real self. So an ideal self is what society sees as acceptable and what others expect you to do to become the best version of yourself. 
And also, this includes the influences embedded in you from the people around you. Maybe your family, you know, your friends, your classmates. Okay. And then on the other hand, the real self is actually who you are. No, the real you, your your real feelings, your real thoughts, no, your emotions at that moment. And then Eric Byrne um, is a psychiatrist that presents that the self has ego states. So these are the parent, adult, and child states. So the parent ego state is our side of authority. So if there are times that we're, we're being like that, that's being explained by Eric Byrne, a more authority authoritative ta ng atong personality or atong self and then um if we also show some parts of being controlling or critical side that's the parent ego state and then the adult ego state is our rational side no and then the child's ego state is the side of ourself of being playful sensitive highly curious or rebellious okay so um there's still a lot of perspectives from various uh well-known individuals as to how uh they see and understand the self. So if you can observe there are certain similarities between one philosopher to one another and then some aspects of their concept of self are the same as others. So probably they just twitch or added some detailed uh, explanations on it so it's up to us no it's up to you uh, of how we understand their concept and whether we agree or disagree with their idea of what self is okay so no i hope that um you were able to learn something new from this short and comprehensive uh, discussion video and um i really hope also that you are already prepared for upcoming summative test no happening really very very soon <laughs> okay so again thank you so much for listening and thank you so much also for your attention have a great day ahead